it is with immense joy and a hearty welcome that I kickstart this grand summit that Dun and Bradstreet and G7CR Technologies Business Enterprises of Tomorrow 2024 presented by the Bank of Baroda. We, ladies and gentlemen, are proud to present our theme, Fueling the Spirit of Udyami Bharat. This theme celebrates and explores the dynamic contributions of these vital sectors. The core objective of Udyami Bharat is to foster innovation, promote entrepreneurship, facilitate capacity building, and empower women to significantly impact the MSME sector. We shall now begin the summit by the auspicious lamp lighting ceremony. Let's begin with the first session of the day, an introductory session on the state of SMEs in India. And to deliver this note, may I please call upon Dr. Arun Singh, Global Chief Economist, Dun and Bradstreet, India. The companies who are producing good today, and they are set to produce great tomorrow, they're basically going to contribute to the growth journey, what we call next 25 years, Viksit Bharat by 2047. That's not possible unless all of us come together and ensure that we are trending in that direction, not just a 5 trillion economy. We are looking for a 30 trillion economy by then. If that's the scenario, I think we got a good task in front of all of us. Now let's proceed to the next part of the summit, that is the first panel discussion of this morning, Building Resilient Businesses in Uncertain Times, Founders' Perspective. There has been a growth in uh, new company formation in tier three cities. It's actually moving from tier one to towards, not even tier two, but tier three. That really actually democratizes uh, growth. You know, the changing norm is uh, there is a section of India which is selling D2C, which is to sell to your house and my house and deliver it in 10 minutes. And that's witnessing a huge spike. And then there is Bharat and there's a gold mine in both places. Which one do you want to go after is the question. Don't get too excited in good times because bad time is around the corner. So keep your balance, keep your cash intact. That's very, very important in today's business. You got to be cash liquidity focused because if you're only sale and profit focused and you don't have the liquidity, well, you can't run your company the way you should. Textiles is a mature industry and a mature industry will never give you very high alarming margins unless you get into a niche segment. If you want to be either you be a volume player or you be a niche player where you find a niche and you are able to sustain on that thing with higher margins. But then if you start growing, you're going to see a totally different picture. So there are so many things happening that, you know, how do you, how do you project for this? What analysis can you do? It's not analysis, it's paralysis. How do you project for six black swans? Uh, just in time has become just in case. We now move on to the next one, which is breaking barriers, empowering women entrepreneurs in an Udhyami Bharat environment. When we're talking about women entrepreneurship, the current ratio is at 21% only, if I may say so. While we're walking a journey of looking at diversity to be at 40% to 60%, a 21% ratio says that we have so much more to do. I supply to MORTH and NHAI, and those solutions when I supply, the perception of the officers that a woman can do business was not existing, it exists now. What government is doing is, A, we are making skills aspirational. We want the youth of our country to be skilled. We do not want them to come out out of colleges with degrees in their hand, but no skill to get a livelihood. When I was uh, going through a few books, I found Mahatma Gandhi, who has worked so much for women, and he really encouraged women to come forward in all his uh, activities. He also said that the women should come forward for social and religious activity, activities, but stay away from commercial activities. So, you know, uh, our forefathers always believed in a traditional setup of family. And that's the biggest drawback and that's the biggest mindset which needs to be changed in today's time. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I now take the pleasure of inviting on stage Mr. Dhrubhashis Bhattacharya, Head MSME and Co-Lending Bank of Baroda to deliver the keynote address. 90% of our borrowers are micro-segment borrowers. In the year 2020, there was a scheme launched PM Swanidhi. It was Prime Minister's street vendor program to finance the street vendors from an amount ticket size of 10,000 rupees. Can you imagine aapka cons economies of scale will allow you to lend 10,000 rupees? The OPEX actually shoots off the roof. But we did that 60 lakh. Six million street vendors were financed by the public sector banks. That's a huge spot to the financial inclusion. As a bank, as a public sector bank, since we are government sponsored bank, we have two agenda which we drive. One is a social agenda, one is the, of course, the, uh, the PNL agenda. We now move ahead towards the next panel discussion that is access to finance, fast tracking growth. The gap when it comes to SME uh, having access to uh, the formal capital, only 14% of 64 million uh, MSMEs today have access to the formal, formal capital. The confidence of the bankers to, to bring the liquidity on trades is one of the key factors for the success. And today we have reached a stage where we are blessed that every bank has a desk for trades, a special team for trades. From what our understanding of the government policies are that they are basically trying to do two things. One is uh, to uh, enable uh, young entrepreneurs to become job creators rather than job seekers as was the uh, system previously. And the second thing is they are trying to encourage entrepreneurs to create value in the system. You are concerned about financial literacy, you don't need ratios to know the ratios. What is it important is that timely you have submissions, whether it is YTR or GST, you have to file them in time. You have to maintain your credit rating. I am not saying that every time you have to improve. You know, in a small parlance ranking, CMR1, you are always in CMR1, but in 1, 2, 3, you are always in CMR1. Don't let that slip happen. Pay the financials on time. The situation is the same. Manageable situation because there's a temporary cash flow situation which all MSMEs will go through. It's a very volatile industry. But there's one person who's proactive, who's envisaged and has been transparently coming and telling the financial institution that this is what I might encounter. Yes. Let's figure out how we can solve this. As against the other one who will just escape and try and avoid the yeah. interactions. We move on to the next discussion which is titled From Local to Global or the Ami Bharat's journey in the global supply chains? First, you need to understand what exactly your customer required. So you need to match the customer requirement. Secondly, the challenge is right now, one of the biggest challenge I will say is the freights. Today, the MSME companies are getting the export orders, but tomorrow the freights are keep changing. So this is the one of the bottleneck all all exporters are currently facing. First and foremost is uh, uh, identifying the right source for the products, the raw material quality that will reflect in the whole uh, uh, chain. The material made of a low quality raw material will have only that quality and when it reaches the market, that will be rejected. So we cannot afford to do like that. It's now time for me to invite over the speaker, Mr. Rupendra Kumar, Partner, Technical Specialist, IBM, who will deliver the keynote session. Now, India, in Asia, we are also going to have an act for the protection of the personal data. And the DPDP that is coming here is basically allowing the data principals or the data owners to be in control by putting in uh, policies like consent management, progressive profiling, and whatnot. We move on to the next panel discussion that we have for the day, which is securing tomorrow, integrating cyber resilience and tech-driven efficiency. The organization's first perspective always would be to bank on efficiency because that will give them cost advantage, that will give them accuracy, that will give them uh, added advantage in terms of uh, reducing manpower, etc. But that, what that can lead to is uh, a bland, impersonal experience to users. We identified what what are the technologies available and how can we build the whole automation piece of it, the whole no code, low code, no code platform to it. And also we started integrating these pieces. 
See, in isolation, it looks very good. But when you have to really leverage the power of the automation, power of the efficiency, you need to connect the dots at the enterprise level. Agriculture is the least digitized industry uh, if you compare it to any other industry. So that means there's a huge scope in the industry. And, and that goes by, goes by saying that there is very, less autom very little automation, very little, little digitization and use of tech happening. And primary reason it, it is happening because the paying customers, which are the farmers, they have very, uh, uh, the paying capacity for, uh, they're, they're, with them is very less. The core of our business is to protect data, while at the same time leverage security to drive our business. We are service providers at the end of the day, right? If somehow their passwords get breezed because they were reusing it on a different platform, it would still bring a bad name to us, right? Cloud has enabled a lot of businesses in India, right? be it a food delivery platforms, everything digital that you're seeing, including Digiatra today, that fast-paced digitization is possible because of cloud. We are missing out the security portion because we have a certain myth which is there that if we go for the security, there would be the dedication or dedicated team is required, entire services is required. Now that era has changed. The people have started offering the multiple solutions. You create a sustainable business and for that purpose, you would need to make sure that you have a good uh, architecture in place which can uh, monitor your data so that you can use that data to take uh, you know, decisions based on the insights. We would now be moving on to the next discussion that we have by Mr. Daniel Hichette, the Chief Alliance Officer for 63 SATs, to share his valuable perspectives on the topic of ensuring cybersecurity resilience in the digital age. When you're a company at the heart of the BFSI industry running exchanges, you are mainly a target. Why you're a target? Makes sense. Once you run an exchange, and let's say you have a downtime, People are losing money, investors are losing money, exchange prices uh, go wild, and the entire economy can collapse. And this is why, unlike most companies who are prone to cyber attacks by you know, just bad actors, small hackers, exchanges are also prone to nation-sponsored attacks. We move on to the next discussion that we have about enabling MSMEs for Atman Nirvartha, strategies, challenges, and opportunities. Technology will be embraced in two manners. One is on the shop floor, where you need to, I think, as an entrepreneur, we have also started that journey where we need to uh, engage with a lot of automation, a lot of robotics on the shop floor so that we can take away the skill from the job. But at the same time, we would also need the manpower. So, you know, it's a balancing of what India has to offer, which is low cost but at the same time uh, taking away the skill from the people and automating your processes so that you can be consistent and you know you can always ramp up your revenue and top line. The recycling ratio or the collection of waste paper in India is only about 35%. If you take the global average, it's higher 65-70%. So I think the challenges and the opportunities are both together. One, that India has a great, great opportunity to become one of the largest waste paper collectors because of the population that we have. The consumption of paper per capita per person right now is not even 10 to 12 kgs. This green power means that power is a power policy that we green power produce. So, in every state, the central government policy is not following the state of every state. It means that their state has a different policy. So, this is why power cost is growing a lot. कोस्ट को इम्पैक्ट मतलब वो मटेरियल पे इम्पैक्ट कर दिए तो उनको एक सेंट्रलाइज करना चाहिए कि तो जो पावर कोस्ट को हम रिड्यूस करें और कैप्टिव कंजम्स के लिए सोलार या विंड में जा सके तो हमारा पावर कोस्ट हम डाउन कर सके वी मूव फॉरवर्ड इन आवर इवेंट हैज आई एम प्लीज टू इनवाइट Mr. Avinash Gupta, MD and CEO of Dun and Bradstreet, India, to deliver the keynote address for the day. Well, none of this growth can happen without digitization. Processes have to be digitized, uh, financing has to be digitized, onboarding has to be digitized, all of that has to be digitized. And that's again a key theme because that, you know, more and more uh, SMEs need to get digitized themselves, get uh, smarter with technology. We need to get going in terms of 
making the micros bigger, you know, getting that number up to a higher number. Uh, when you say, look at India and we say we're the fifth largest GDP and you only have 1.5 lakh companies with more than 10 crores of turnover, we've got a long way to go in terms of scale and size. It's time for me to welcome on stage Mr. T. Koshi, Managing Director and CEO, Open Network for Digital Commerce, ONDC. He would be delivering a keynote address on a very interesting topic, which is expanding business horizon for MSMEs via digital platforms. The digital commerce or the e-commerce world in India, while we are all very active users, we are the privileged, the privileged part of the society in India, but what's the kind of penetration in the buy side? Maybe seven, eight, nine. It has not reached double digits. With more and more users getting more and more comfortable to the digital world, if the small businesses are not equipped to take, to benefit from it, then it is going to be a big challenge in the years to come. We're moving to a very, very exciting part of the event right now. In fact, we have arrived at a major highlight of the event, the unveiling of the 15th edition of the leading SMEs of India and the 5th edition of the leading mid-corporates of India publication. It's time for me to now invite on stage Shri Amitabh Khan, G20, Sherpa and former CEO Niti Ayo, Government of India, to share his viewpoints on today's theme. We've seen better credit discipline with the insolvency and bankruptcy code. We've seen vast number of laws. I think India's only country which has eliminated 1,600 laws with uh, uh, scrapping of a number of rules, regulation, procedures for ease of doing business. But it's critical that when India grows rapidly, it is able to create many more jobs. And growth with jobs will be critical. And therefore, to my mind, uh, India's growth story will really be fueled by uh, the MSME sector in a very big way. And it's very critical that we are able to uh, really make MSMEs a very integral part of not merely the domestic growth story, but make them a very integral part of the global value chain. Next on our agenda, I am pleased to invite Ms. Jacinta Lewis, Chief Executive Officer, G7CR Technologies, to share her insights on the compelling topic of modernization, operations creating new age businesses. When you are a micro business, you are the superhero, right? You are running your business, it is your way, you're there in every sales presentation. I've met founders uh, who take like six calls a day, somebody going to the customer meeting and he's sitting in the parking, in the car parking, and he's taking a customer call from there doing a demo of his product, right? So you're the superhero in that case. But if you want to become that large enterprise, we have to automate. And most often, automation is misunderstood. And now, ladies and gentlemen, moving ahead, it's my great honor to invite Srimati Mercy Epao, the esteemed Joint Secretary of the Ministry of Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises, Government of India, to grace the stage and deliver the keynote address. We would like to handhold the women entrepreneurs, bring them under the formal umbrella, because if you look at the registration that we have had on the UDM portal and UDM assisted portal, uh, today, I think it has 4.6 uh, crore today, and uh, put together, both UDM and UDM assisted put together, 39% uh, uh, you know, is uh, um, women. And so we know that if we handhold and then collaborate with uh, SCGs and also those women group which are already into some economic activities, then we know that there is a whole lot that we can do uh, for the women. The next segment, I am honored to invite another distinguished leader, Dr. Vivek Debroy, Chairman, Economic Advisory Council to the Prime Minister, Government of India, to deliver the keynote address on the government's strategic role in Udhyami Bharat, empowering entrepreneurs, fostering innovation, and building self-reliance. Compared to many countries in the world, 
India is doing reasonably well on macro fundamentals, whether that is the real rate of growth, whether it is inflation, or any other parameter. But the aspiration that India has, the aspiration that India's citizens have, is much higher. In the next five years, and the next five years are important because in the next five years, we will become the third largest economy in the world in terms of official exchange rates, not merely purchasing power parity exchange rates. The summit also acknowledged and felicitated the pivotal contribution of SMEs and mid-corporates who have positioned themselves as engines of employment and empowerment. Their dedication and innovation have not only fueled substantial growth but also fostered a culture of opportunity and advancement nationwide. Thank you especially Dr. Vivek Dev Roy, Sri Amitabh Kant, Mr. T. Koshi and Sri Mati Mercier Poets for taking out time and uh, sharing their insights, views with us on how MSMEs can really grow and uh, we can have an Atmanirbhar Bharat and uh, a very resilient uh, Bharat.